Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today's topic is explosion, or as I will tell you later, actually not. It's not explosion. It's blow up, which is not explosion. But we'll get there uh, later. And I will, um, well, I already hear it here. It's more like blowing up a balloon. It's like inflation. We'll get there. Um, and yeah, so I will motivate this along or what we will see in you know, of kind of resolution of singularities. So let's get started and take one means it gets a bit technical. So there will be a take two and today we just go for uh, the intuition. So singularity is kind of is a really important concept in, in mathematics, not just in mathematics, it's kind of in life in general. They're kind of interesting and I usually like to use the word interesting as meaning good or bad or both or neither we can't tell but at least somewhat interesting and the, really they play a crucial role everywhere it's kind of when, the, when everything kind of changes that's kind of the, the point so usually if you, i think about my life it's kind of very boring it's kind of everyday life it's just uh it's just all the same and then there are some interesting parts which kind of change everything but they're usually kind of point type events they're very very short but they kind of change everything. If you want an example, every parent can tell you the birth of a child is a singular event in your life. It's actually not that long, and the birth itself will not take very long, but it changes a lot. Yeah, it's just that's what singularities are. Just points where something drastically changes. And in mathematics, well, life is not mathematics. So right? mathematics is life, life is not mathematics, whatever. In mathematics, we usually have toy examples. And singularities tend to be points. So in this video, singularities are point events. Uh, for example, a cone. The most interesting part of a cone is probably the origin, right? Because that's that's where something singular happens. Otherwise, it just always looks the same. It gets a bit bigger or a bit smaller, but essentially it looks the same. So mathematics is a lot of and if algebraic geometry in particular, and mathematics in general, is a lot about studying singularities. And studying singularities, because singularities are interesting, yeah? hopefully this slide is convincing enough that singularities are interesting, they're good and bad at the same time, they're also the difficult part about studying something. Uh, the generic study, what people usually call the generic study, is much easier than the study of singularities. So somehow it would be good to have some way to go between a generic picture and a singular picture. Yeah. Try to say that again. Singularities are important. You can't avoid them. Yeah. They, they appear in life. If you get hit by a car, I hope you won't get hit by a car, but that's a singularity in your, in your life. It really changes your life quite a lot. Um, and you could, we cannot avoid them. So you kind of want a method to go between the everyday type things, the generic things, and the singular type things. And this is kind of what algebraic geometry is really good at. And this is where this uh, idea of blow ups come up yeah blow up of singularities so let's say you have a singularity like in the picture down here um flop it goes like this like a fish tail i call this a fish tail um it goes like a fish tail and you have as you can see there's one really interesting point uh, clearly this double point where the thing crosses and this is interesting right remember interesting good and bad well they're interesting but they're also difficult so is there a way to actually associate to my picture down here a space which somewhat captures the flavor of the singularity, but it's much more regular in, uh, well, it's, it's not singular. Right? It's much more regular. It's much more generic. And, well, there are many ways of doing this, but the way of I would like to describe today uh, and in the coming videos is the following. So you kind of take this picture and turn it in time. So all of these lines down here become the lines up here, if you want. And instead of going like this, you just kind of turn it up in time, right? So you know, go like this. I can't even draw it if I draw it because I will still intersect. But if you think of this as going now in space, like in this absolutely fabulous picture that I stole, uh, link is in the description. Then you can kind of see that the singularity is now resolved because instead of crossing, they are now, well, you just take this point, take it times time, if you want. And they're now here and here, so they're kind of split apart. 
But otherwise, the picture is not so different from what we have done, and we kind of can remember that we split around, split apart our singularity in two points. For example. That's like a blow. Yeah, like blow up in this case is really just blowing up a balloon if you want. Um, and here's another singularity. So this one we had, right? So you could kind of, an example, the left a double point becomes two points. You pull something in space. But what if you have a singularity of this form? Again, a beautiful picture that I stole. Uh, if you have a singularity of this form, so here's the most interesting point, like the tier, kind of could try to play the same game. You pull it up in space, um, but if you do that, in order to get rid of the singularity, you will need to add a little bit of twist to your uh, whatever you pull up. And you can kind of see that now the curve down here, if you do it on the twist, it goes around like this. And you can still avoid the singularity. And the little circle here, for example, becomes this guy. So what you really should do, the little circle here, yeah, becomes this guy here. So what you really should think of is that, that you kind of want to identify this part again with this part. It's like taking a twist and then identify the edges. That's what this is. It kind of pulls things into space. And this is my original picture and this is my blow up. Picture. And I kind of have, I mean, you need to do the algebra. You need to believe me at this point. But it's somewhat believable that clearly lose some structure of the singularity if you go to the blow up. But something is still kind of in the picture, like here. You may might want to remember that you had a double point. But otherwise, kind of the picture looks almost the same. And this is like the idea there. Birationally equivalent, which is algebraically geometry speaking, saying it's not quite the same, but almost the same. And this is exactly the idea of uh, having a blow up. And in this case, it's really just adding a twisted time direction. The twist gets rid of the singularities, which hopefully is reasonably clear in the picture. And you would do it formally like this. So let's say we want to blow up an affine variety. Hmm? Uh, along some polynomials, because that's what algebraic right geometers do, affine varieties, polynomials. Sounds perfect to me. Okay. So what you do is, you consider this U set, so take, get, get rid of the vanishing set of the polynomials. You get rid of the vanishing set, so the polynomials do not vanish simultaneously of what is left. So you get a map of two projective space by just evaluating the polynomial. And this gives you a graph, which is now an element of U, and a graph in the usual sense, yeah, and the graph in this, in this sense. Just, um, yeah, the graph in this sense is just uh, a tuple of x and f of x. But now this lives in U cross projective space, and we call that thing the blow up. Not quite, we call the closure of that thing a blow up. And this is exactly doing what we want. And as you can already see from the definition, it's not quite clear why it's actually doing what we want, but essentially for this video, what you should, what you should keep in mind is the projective space. If you have seen this idea in topology, this looks familiar. Projective space is always like twisting something and then gluing ends together. If you remember what the projective plane is from geometry, uh, from topology, it's like the, taking a piece of paper, um, call this side A, call this side A as well. And then whatever, call the other side B, call the other side B, and you glue them together, twisting them up. The easy thing is if you just glue together A and A, for example, you get a Mobius strip. So Mobius strip has a twist built in. If you do it twice, you would get the real projective plane. Uh, RP2. And RP1, in my little example, is you could think of it as exactly doing this twist that we did um, before in this wonderful beautiful picture here that I stole, obviously, <laughs> because I kind of steal all pictures anyway. Um, yeah, so this is kind of doing the twist automatically, and this is hopefully, at least for this video, convincing enough why this should be the definition of a blow-up, if you believe me that you should kind of twist um, kind of the coordinates. And as I already said, just to be sure here, uh, the name comes from more like, it's, it's in the sense of inflation. Yeah. Sometimes people say zooming into the picture, blow up like inflation, or zooming into a picture. Um, it's not meant in the sense of explosion. You're not destroying your space. So blowing up a plane is actually a fine operation to just inflate it. Uh, uh, anyway, 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.